So here's a prototypical who grade one type glioma, that's the polycytic astrocytoma. So it's much more common in children, occurs primarily in those first two decades. It can arise anywhere in the CNS, but here are some of the preferred sites like the optic nerve, thalamus, hemispheres, cerebellum, brainstem, spinal cord. In my adult population, by and far the most common place I see this tumor is in the cerebellum. In fact, I, I had a patient two weeks ago who had a recurrent uh, polycytic astrocytoma in his cerebellum. On imaging, uh, these tumors are usually very well circumscribed and contrast enhancing. So here is an axial uh, T1 with contrast uh, MRI picture showing a cerebellar tumor, very classic picture of this type of tumor where you have this enhancing nodule associated with a large cyst. And this specimen is, is a great example of how it's a very well circumscribed, well defined nodule with that cyst. Histopathologically, what do they look like? So this uh, astrocytic tumor is uh, relatively low cellularity. It has a unique biphasic pattern. So there's a compacted area of bipolar cells and Rosenthal fibers, and then there's another pattern of loosely textured areas with multipolar cells, cyst, and eosinophilic granular uh, bodies. Very rare to see things like mitoses, atypia, microvascular proliferation. The uh, Rosenthal fibers, uh, these are these corkscrew shaped uh, eosinophilic fibers in the astrocytic processes made up of alpha B crystalline. Those eosinophilic granular bodies, these are aggregates in the astrocytic processes made up of alpha-1 antichymotrypsin and alpha-1 antitrypsin. So here's a little bit of what that looks like. So if you step back, you can kind of see the biphasic pattern. There's the compact areas and the loose areas. Here's an example of those Rosenthal fibers, those long squiggly eosinophilic fibers inside the astrocytic processes. Uh, as far as markers in, on immunohistochemistry, so these are the heavily GFAP positive gliofibrillaricidic protein, and the KI67 index would be very, very low, 1%. So that refers to the number of cells that are cycling or mitotically active. As far as any sort of genetics, uh, you have to think about NF1. So NF1 patients, 15% um, of them will develop uh, these types of tumors and especially in the optic nerve. Remember NF1 gene is, a, is on chromosome 17, it's a tumor suppressor gene. In contrast to the other uh, astrocytomas that we'll talk about, TP53 mutations are very, very rare in this tumor. It does have uh, chromosome seven and eight uh, gains. So the prognosis is excellent. Surgery can cure these patients without any other adjuvant therapy. All right, what about uh, who grade two? So sort of the classic one there is the well-differentiated astrocytoma. Historically, we used to call this low-grade glioma. Uh, that term has kind of fallen out of favor a little bit. So this is a little bit more frequent, 10 to 15% of the Astrocytic tumors, it occurs in a little bit older population, average age of about 30, equally in men and women. As far as where it occurs, you see the most common location supratentorally in the frontal and temporal lobes. On neuroimaging, this is what a typical grade two uh, glioma might look like. Uh, it's not enhancing and it's gonna typically be very bright on T2 or flare images. So here on the left is a T1 plus contrast axial MRI image. So very well demarcated uh, lesion that's dark, not contrast enhancing. And here's that same uh, picture, but the T2 sequence. And you can see how bright and flare enhancing this is. Uh, I would say most uh, glioma surgeons uh, probably encourage folks to use this image when you're uh, resecting these tumors. Uh, in the operating room. Histopathologically, these are tumors that have well-differentiated cells. So well-differentiated fibrillary gem gemistocytic astrocytes on top of a mild, mild uh, microcystic tumor background. 
a little bit more hypercellularity, occasional atypia, but really no mitotic activity, no microvascular proliferation or necrosis. And this is a sort of a typical um, picture of what that might look like. Uh, these cells are, will also be positive for GFAP as well as bimentin in S100. So those are gonna be strong markers for uh, most of the uh, glioma tumors. That is most tumors that are well differentiated. So as you get more malignant, more undifferentiated, these markers are less obvious, less uh, prevalent. KI67 index is gonna be higher. So it's up to two to 3% uh, in these grade two tumors. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.